Morning, ladies and gentlemen, Birdo War here. I hope you are doing well, my sister and brother. Happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday. Did you take time out to study? Remember, we must, must study the word, we must study the word. And we know how late it is on this planet Earth. And we know the solution is Jesus Christ. And he states, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3, 16. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. Right now, Father God, I ask you that you will decree me so that you will be increased father god allow your holy spirit father god to take full control i thank you in jesus name amen and amen okay my sister and brother scripture reading is coming from romans 8 verses 10 i'm sorry yeah romans 8 verses 10 it's like what is that romans 8 verses 10 and it says and if christ be in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. So let's get into it. So we're going to do a review, a quick review of faith and works hand in hand. And this is chapter 13 of, let me see if I get my book here, of Faith and Works by Ellen G. White. Can you guys see that? Faith and Works by Ellen G. White. Oh, hold on. You guys see that? Okay. So let's do a quick review. So for those of you that want the in-depth studies, you can either scroll along on Facebook or you can go over to YouTube under Burdell Warrior and you'll find the, uh, the in-depth lesson study there as well. So chapter 13, review of chapter 13, Faith and Works. It says, Jesus died, so this is the opening point. Jesus died to save his people from their sins. And redemption in Christ means to cease the transgressions of the law of God and to be freed from every sin. No heart that is stirring with enmity against the law of God is in harmony with Christ, who suffered on Calvary to vindicate and exalt the law before the universe. So here's point number one. Here, point number one. I am holy. I am sinless. Jesus, Jesus teaches me that if I keep the law, I am fallen from grace. The law is a yoke of bondage. The Lord said, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. We should study the word of God carefully that we may come into right decision and act accordingly. For then we shall obey the word and be in harmony with the God's, with God's holy law. Point number two, and this is under not saved by law nor in disobedience. It says, by faith, take hold of the merit of Christ and the soul cleansing blood will be applied. The more clearly we see the evils and the perils to which we have been ex exposed, the more grateful shall we be for deliverance through Christ. The gospel of Christ does not give men license to break the law, for it was through transgressions that the floodgates of woe were opened upon our world. Okay, let's move on over to point number three, and this is under a doctrine full of deception. The doctrine of sanctification advocates by many is full of deceptions because it is flattering to the natural heart, but the kindest thing that are that can be preached to the sinner is the truth of the binding claims of the law of God. Faith and works must go hand in hand, for works without, no, 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 let me go back. Faith and works must go hand in hand, for faith without works is dead, being alone. So let's move on over to point number four, and this was under yesterday, uh, the test of doctrine, the test of doctrine. And it says, the prophet declares a truth. A truth that must let me go back father God ask to father God to take full control calm my mind and my heart and I thank you in Jesus name amen and amen I state the Apostle declares a truth by which we may test all doctrine he said 
to the law and to the testimonies. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And you can find this in Isaiah uh, chapter 8, verses 20. So here is the closing point. In the word of God, the honest seeker for truth will find the rules for genuine sanctification. The apostle says, there is neither, no, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For what the law could not do in it, that it was weak through the flesh, God sends his God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemns sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. And if you want um, more uh, studies, you can look at Romans chapter 8 verses 1 through 9. So that concludes my topic today, my sister, my brother. The review of faith and works hand in hand. Oh, so then on uh, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, we're going to go into a new topic, and it is the experience of righteousness by faith outlined. The experience of righteousness by faith outlined. That will be our topic for tomorrow. We'll be in chapter 14. So may I share with you my devotion? But before I do that, Hold on, let me bring this over here. I'm going to need this next. Okay, let me drink some water, water, water. Okay, here we go. And this is oneness with Christ. Mm, oneness with Christ. And it says, I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. And this is coming from John 17, verses 23. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that I can hear the birds singing, Father God. I can see, I can feel, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for waking me up this morning and giving me another opportunity to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Father, as I go through this devotion, Father God, allow your Holy Spirit to take full control. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay. So let, let us make it known that provisions has been made for our redemption. Christ left the heavenly courts and came to this world to make an atonement for us. All who comes to him in living faith will be enabled to stand on vintage ground. As God's servant proclaim these things, Satan steps up to some of those who have itching minds and present his scientific problems. Men will be tempted to place science above God. Let me repeat that. Men will be tempted, no mate, men will be tempted to place science above God, but whom by searching can find out God. Men may put their own interpretation upon God, but no human mind can comprehend him. This problem cannot be given, okay, this problem has not been given us to solve, okay? Let not finite man attempt to interpret Jehovah. Let none in, indulge in speculations regarding his nature. Here, here silence is eloquent. The omniscient meaning the all-knowing, the all-wise, the all-seeing one is above discussion. Let me repeat that. Boy, hold on, hold on. I got a bug on me. Hold on. It says here, the all-knowing, the all-wise, the all-seeing one is above discussion. Christ is one with the Father, 
but God and Christ are two distinct personages. Read the prayer of Christ in the 17th chapter of John, and you will find this point clearly brought out. How earnestly the Savior prayed that his disciple may be one with him as he was one with the Father. But the unity that is to exist between Christ and his followers does not destroy the personality of either. They are to be one with him as he is one with the Father. By this unity, they are to make it plain to the world that God sends his Son to save sinner. Let me repeat this. By this unity, they are to make it plain to the world that God sent his Son to save sinners. The oneness of Christ's followers with him is to be the great unmistakable proof that God did indeed send his son into the world to save sinners. But a, but a loose meaning, an unsecured, lax religion, leaves the world confused and bewildered. My brethren and sisters, Take your stand on the elevated platform and work to the point to be one with Christ. Let me repeat that. Let me drink some water. Hold on. It says here, my brethren and sister, take your stand on an elevated platform and work to the point to be one with Christ. The heart of the Savior is set upon his followers, fulfilling God's purpose in all its heights and depth. They are to be one with him, even though they are scattered, they, yeah, even though they are scattered the world over. But God cannot make them one in Christ unless they are willing to give up their own way for his way. Let me repeat that. It says, but God cannot make them be in Christ. Let me, yep. Yeah. But God cannot make them one in Christ unless they are willing to give up their own way for his way. In the view of all that Christ has suffered for us, should we complain when we are called to endure self-denial and suffering? Would not this make God ashamed of us? Let us rejoice that it is our privilege to be partakers in the suffering of Christ. For, for thus only can we be fitted to be partakers of his glory. Should I repeat this? This was a long one, okay? Let us rejoice that it is our privilege to be partakers in the suffering of Christ. For thus only can we be fitted to be partakers of his glory. Let us live lives that will lead sinners to the Savior. Christ carried his humanity with him into the heavenly courts, and all humanity can claim him as their representative. We may, we, make, we may be made complete in him. We may be made complete in him. So that concludes my devotion, oneness with Christ. People talk about oneness, oneness, oneness with this one, oneness with this. So what about oneness with Christ? That is everything, my sister and brother. Have a oneness with Christ, being one. How can we do that? We have to surrender. I have to surrender my life to him and allow him to take full control. There is no, how you say, there's no way of getting around that. We all have to go to Jesus Christ through Jesus Christ to get to the Father in order to make it into heaven. Okay, so here is my, I feel like I have some, um, you know, sometimes like you're walking out and then there is uh, spider webs and you could like feel the little thing on your face. I just feel like I walked through some spider web. Maybe when I went under that tree there, 
Okay, so here it is. The wonder of it all. It says, there is the wonder of sunset at evening. The wonders as sunrise I see. But the wonders of wonders that thrill my soul is the wonder that God loves me. Oh, the wonders of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. Oh, the wonders of it all, the wonders of it all, just to think that God loves me. Here's the last verse. There's the wonders of springtime and harvest, the sky, the stars, the sun. But the wonders of wonders that thrill my soul is the wonders that only begun. Oh, the wonders of it all, the wonders of it all, just to think that God loves me. Oh, the wonders of it all, the wonders of it all, just to think that God loves me. Can you believe it? I'm just thinking, I said, why is he there? And I'm thinking, it's Tuesday. This is Wednesday. It's Wednesday. He is over there, and that's the garbage truck, the garbage truck. So let me do the last verse again. It says, there's the wonders of springtime and harvest, the sky, the stars, the sun. But the wonders of wonders that thrill my soul is the wonders that only begun. Oh, the wonders of it all, the wonders of it all, just to think that God loves me. Oh, the wonders of it all, the wonders of it all, just to think that God loves me. God loves you. Ah, it's not beautiful, it's not beautiful. I tell you, the wonders of it all, I tell you, my sister and brother, the wonder of it all is that God loves me, he loves you. I tell you, it's not, it's not good, it's not good. Somebody said, well, nobody loves me, nobody loves me. Yes, my sister, my brother, Jesus loves you, he died for you. I tell you, God the Father loves us, he loves us, loves us, loves us, loved us, and he has given us everything that we'll be able to make it into the kingdom. And how, what, how did he do that? He gave us his son, and then when his son left, he sent us the comforter. So everything is done for us to make it in. So there is, we should not be complaining. Uh, remember what we're going through, we got to go through, because God the Father sees things in us that is not of him. So he has to purify us, he has to polish us. And you know, when you trying to get a, a stain out of a garment, you put all that pressure on it, right? So that's, 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 that's all it means, my sister and brother, that you, God is putting pressure in order to take out the stains, the sin in us. Okay, like the diamond, you know, you say, okay, the chipping of the diamond, it's like it's chipping, chipping, chipping. And he's the polishing you, polishing you, he's polishing me. So whatever we're going through, my sister, my brother, it's because God sees something in you, he sees something in me that is not of him. So he's like, you know what, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta remove it. And we have to be patient as, as, as he remove it. So we should not be complaining, hold on. We should not be complaining. We should not be complaining because as you think about it, everything works together for the good, my sister and brother. So you know, like you've got the electricity, you have to have the negative and the positive in order for that light to go on. So it's the same thing with us. So the good, the bad, and the ugly all works together for our good. We might not see it as we're going through it, but it works out. It works out in the end. As long as we put our trust in the Lord, you know, be like that baby that's leaning, you know, like you're carrying that baby. And I see cobwebs right over there as well. As you're carrying that, as, as, as you carrying that baby, right? The baby just rests on you and he looks up in your, in your face and he's smiling and you know, and you just pat, just, just pat it his, his, his back, right? So it's the same thing. So as, as a child, as a child of God, we have to go and say, Lord, take me. And as he takes you and he's carrying you, my sister and brother, because if you look in the sand, it's only one foot step right because he is carrying you he's carrying you and as he continue to carrying you but here's the thing if you're complaining and fighting and fighting and carrying on he's going to put you down because you have to is is uh how would you say there's not going to be no body force to get to heaven it, it's uh how would you say you have to say lord take me so you have to be uh you will have to make an offer say lord take me take me so you have to make the decision 
you have to make the decision. You, there's nobody that's going to be fussing and fighting in order to get to heaven. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Everybody that gets to heaven is going to be there because they love the Lord and they decided to give up everything for the Lord. That's why they're going to say it's going to be a privilege to get to heaven in order to see Jesus. It's going to be a privilege to see Jesus when we get to heaven. Be, we're not going to be fighting. There's going to be no fussing. You're not going to be uh, thinking about, oh, somebody's going to break in my house. Oh, I don't have enough money today. You know what? That that my that that person is getting on my last nerve. It's going to be none of that. There's no drama. It's not going to be none of that type of drama in heaven. All the drama is right here. That's playing out here on this planet. And once Jesus comes back, He's going to destroy this earth. That's why we're not here to save the earth. We are not here to save the earth. We're supposed to be, uh, uh, how would you say, protecting it, cleaning it, but we are not here to save the earth because when Jesus comes back, he is going to destroy this planet. So when somebody say, I'm a tree lover, it's like my sister and brother, you way off, my, you way off, you way off. God called each one of us to love him, and we are called to save souls, to give the final message, to warn people to get out of that false system and come under the umbrella of Jesus Christ. And he says, remember the Sabbath day, uh, Genesis, and so Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We all have to come under one banner, and that is the banner of the Lord. The, the Lord. So as you're going through my something, my sister and brother, as I was going to that point, as you're going through something, my sister and brother, do not play, do not complain, do not murmur, do not say why me and all this stuff. Just go through it, my sister and brother. So you have to say. So if you want to put, because uh, remember, I can state God the Father has measured everything that you're going through, everything that I'm going through. Hold on. He has measured everything you're going through, everything I'm going through. He knows, like Job, that you can stand the test. Okay? So with that, he's giving you all the provisions, all the, all the power to do his, his, his will. And so that's why we do not complain. We do not murmur. And so as you drink in this bitter cup, and if the first draft that he gives you does not cleanse you or purify you he's going to give you another cup and another cup unless you say stop i don't want no more leave me alone then he's going to leave you alone but for those of us that say lord take me take full control uh clean this empty clean this empty vessels and fill me up and as you continue to drink that that bitter cup my sister brother if you want a little bit of sweetener in that bitter cup you put some patient endurance and prayer what did i say patient endurance and prayer so put some pep in your step and that's what we're going to need to get through these final days of earth history my sister my brother so get ready get ready jesus is coming soon let us bow for prayer father god i thank you father god for this message father god i thank you that you did not leave me here by myself father god i give you all the praise the honor and glory father god if we have done anything father god that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight father god we ask you father god that you will wash us father god a scrub us father god and make us whiter than snow once you have done that father god fill us up with the love with the power with the strength that we need for these last days father god and we forever father god give you all the praise the honor and glory for we ask this prayer in jesus name amen and amen so my sister brother thank you guys so much for stopping by so if this was the blessing to you can you do me a favor can you hit the like button can you make a comment can you hit the share button and then you can follow me over youtube and then while you're there can you hit the subscribe button hit the bell notification so when my videos goes up you'll be the first to notify then whether you're on facebook or youtube you can give me a thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up and i thank you thank you thank you thank you for doing that thank you thank you for taking the time out of your business schedule to stop by here today and may god continue to bless you overflow your cup so you'll be able to continue to give him all the praise, honor, and glory, my sister and brother. So if you find yourself depressed, go to the word, my sister. Find a scripture, a nugget that you can uh, nibble on today. Find a nugget that you can nibble on today. And as those um, 
neg negative thoughts come to your mind, you could uh, claim that, that, that verse that you just memorized, and the Lord will see you through, and he will see me through, okay? So with that, may I have, one more thing, may I have a hug? Here we go. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my sister and brother. Thank you for that hug. Thank you for stopping by here today. I love you, love you, love you, and I appreciate you. Until tomorrow, be blessed and take care.